Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day today. I'm gonna paint a chicken. I've got some behind me. I, I like to paint them. This one's a rusty hen. The, I'll link the reference photo in this video's description. I did cut out the background a little bit around the feet so I could see them better. Okay, let's have some fun. Okay, let's set the table. Um, before I, I was gonna do my colors, but before I forget, when I was mixing this green, I just dipped the corner of my brush in a little bit of magenta. So you get kind of a rustier, dark corner. And then on this corner, I dipped it in a little purple. You can use black, but you don't need to. You can make pretty dark colors. Um, you can make a black looking color just by mixing your dark colors together. Um, I bet this blue and purple would make a, here. It might be kind of small. I don't want to make a very big one. Oh yeah, that's going to look. Eh. Full strength, it looks. Looks pretty black. When I spread on the, the plate, it looks pretty blue. Okay. This background was scaring me. I mean, it's pretty, but it's awfully bright. And I'm just gonna paint, um, I might not, I might paint the chicken more orange. I'm not sure what I'll do. We'll work on, we'll work on getting it in there, getting some values, but it's nice to have the dark background cause it'll help the, I, I was thinking about calling it backlit, tail, tail light maybe, um, backup lights. I also could call it funky chicken because this is really funky. Anyway, that'll help us. The dark is going to help us. So here, let's do colors. Titanium white. Um, these will all be Liquitex. I use um, the basics a lot because it's less expensive. I really like, I really like both. This is the heavy body professional. Cat yellow medium hue. Right now, I, I always buy it in the tube or a jar because I go through a lot more yellow than any, and white than any other of the colors. So cad yellow medium hue. Quinacridone magenta. I've bought, I've purchased it in a heavy body before too. Sometimes it's just what I can afford, what I can find. A thalo blue green shade. I think it only comes in the heavy body. Mars black. I used a really nice brush from Royal and Lane Nickel. It's a three quarter inch, 19 millimeters. I don't know if you can see that. It's their Zen line. It's nice and thick. I don't know if I can show you, but you can also squish it and thin it out, which is really neat. I don't know if any of that's showing. All right, one thing I was thinking about doing and I don't do it very often, so my, quite often my backgrounds bother me until I get the thing on it or I get the landscape on it or whatever I'm doing. Um, it bothered me for a little bit to have blue down here because, you know, sky is blue. But once I got the green on it, it didn't bother me so much. But I was thinking, you can, um, to help unify your painting, or in this case, unify the background, you can just glaze one color over it. And what's nice, especially in the basics, a lot of the paints are semi-transparent or semi-transparent. That box is 
halfway filled in on the diagonal. Um, and it's not necessarily a basic, you have to look because interestingly, this thalo blue green shade, it says it's quite transparent, the box is open. But I like the transparency because then you can layer. So I'm just gonna get my brush wet. I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but we're gonna try it in real time. I think I might have too much water. And then I dry this with a hair dryer. It might be better to even wait. <laughs> Check it. In. Wait. Oh, I don't know. You know, at least it depends on the weather in your studio. You know, wait an hour. All right, let's let's go for it. Oh yes, it's just gonna kind of warm it up. And I just did a sort of a crisscrossy motion. And see, I, I thinned it with water because I was scared. I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna get some interesting colors. Grabbing just a little bit of water. Oop, maybe too much water. I'm getting braver because it's not picking up the underneath layer. If I don't scrub it too much, I'm gonna have to put another coat on. It's making my magenta look more red, which is totally fine. Oh, and grab a little bit of water. Oh, I have an Annie Tro Art Friends Facebook group, and I am mentioning mentioning that. You see, I kind of like that because it's gonna. I think that, I think I like this. Um, I'm mentioning the group because I I pinned an article. I think it was from Golden about how much water you can use with acrylic paint. You can use quite a bit. Cause I used to be scared cause people were like, don't, you know, don't do this. And I've already got, oh, I didn't totally set the table. I jumped right into my colors. I've already got um, two coats of gesso on my wood panel. Just like glue and I don't know, sand. I don't know what it is. And then I have quite a bit of paint you don't want to get it too thin but it's gonna acrylic likes to glue it like if you store two paintings face to face even if they're varnished they like to stick to each other they like to stick to glass plastic i like that that's interesting and that brought and now my blue is really just more green um i didn't talk about that I've got an eight inch by eight inch canvas panel from US Art Supply. Here, maybe you can see the difference if I turn it. Oh yeah, it's quite, it's a lot bluer on this side because I haven't painted it yet. Here, it's a cradled wood panel. Isn't that fun? I really like those. Uh, there's a link in this video's description to the brushes. A couple different brush companies I like and uh, US Art Supply and there's some Amazon links. Just no pressure, just in case you're curious. Here's what the clear gesso looks like. You can mix paint in it if you want a white gesso or a color gesso, which is why I get the clear. You know, if I have white gesso, I can't make it clear. So, alrighty, I <laughs> think that made sense. I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be back tomorrow. Just a couple of thoughts. Oop, I see where I got my paint on kind of heavy and I want it. I want to keep my paint thin and put it on thick at the end. It's just easier to paint over some of the ridges that the paint can leave. 
I didn't notice it. Um, I'm using this Filbert from Zoo Ting. I like them except for the handles uh, crack and the paint chips off, excuse me, pretty easily. But they are super cheap. You get a whole pack for hardly anything. They are thin. If you like a real thick bristled brush, they're on the thin side too. Um, this is, oh, about three eighths maybe. It's bigger than a quarter inch. And I was just using that to put in some of the darks and some of the lights with a bigger brush. Um, I was trying to find a little brush that I liked. I really like this one, but that didn't last very long. It starts to split. It's not focusing. There, maybe you can see that it, it and it won't. That's okay, but if you can roll it in paint and get it to hold a point, which it's not doing anymore. It's it's still not wanting to hold a point very well. So I was using that one up for a little while. It's a Princeton three over zero. Oh, there, maybe you can see the splitting now. It's a little worse there, there. <laughs> um, I really like these. They're just a little, with little short brushes with little, very few hairs just don't last that long. Really, I could use this one. I've been using this one. It's a new brush, but it'll come to a point. I probably should use this one. It's a 22 from Princeton Select. It's a 22 round. Okay, um, and I've been also using, uh, this is from US Art Supply, which is where the wood, cradle wood panel is from. It says it's a two over zero but it, to me, it's bigger and thicker. But of course, numbers vary per brand anyway. It's not like it's wrong. But it's holding a point. It's a fairly new brush. I don't think it was very expensive. I don't remember. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I've mixed uh, a red. You can use yellow in quinacridone. I use some of the orange. Um, I mixed pretty much a raw sienna color. So a little brown, a lot of orange. I don't remember if I put like a pinch of black in there. You just kind of play with it a little bit. It's pretty close to a raw, or just buy raw sienna. It might be a little darker, a little redder. And then I'm, I'm putting in where the light is, which is really fun. And then the dark background uh, really helps because even though I put one layer down, it's not white, white. And then I put kind of a light brown, really, yeah, I use my brown and a lot of white for here. And this is yellow and white, which is that puddle there. And then this is actually right up in here. I don't know if you can see the difference, but it's actually my raw sienna and white. I just kind of varied the highlight. Here, it's giving me a little tour. The face isn't done. I'm just kind of bringing up the values, getting in the shapes. I look scary. <laughs> Same, I, the feet could be done just because I don't need a lot of detail on them. And I did put in the, I don't know, you call them claws on a chicken. But I'm gonna end up putting, I'm thinking about dandelions, but I'll definitely put weeds on this one. Oh, I think I painted a similar one live. It's a different hen. I'll link that in this video's description. Oh, here, I got sidetracked. I really like, I really like it so far. I like that I put the yellow because it calmed the background down. And then where it goes over the purple, it turns into a muddy color, which is fun. It turned into a brown, but it can turn into any muddy color. So sometimes it's good. Sometimes you'll hear people on YouTube or other places say, you know, don't make mud. Well, I made mud and I'm liking it. So yay for mud. Okay, guys, that's about it. I'm just working up the values and the layers. I'll be back in a bit.
I thought I'd pop in. So layers are helping. It's coming together. I put some quinacridone in there, which helps tie in the background. Um, I've worked more on the face. It could be done maybe. Oh no, we need a little highlight in the eye. But I use yellow and some pinks to get some glow on it. I think it's working. I need to step back from it. I've been on top of it for a while. I need to go with cooler, more cooler lights up here, but I pretty much have the wing. So the wing goes like this, and then there's some feathers that come up over it. I, I pretty much have that. I think that's working. I think what might help is, um, I just keep switching here. I, I added a number one round. Just use whatever brush you like, but you guys, some of you guys like to know which ones. Maybe what I need to do, this just popped into my head. Now I'm gonna come back and lighten it, but maybe let's pop in some yellows. And maybe that'd be enough. I don't have to have white everywhere. Or I don't have to go quite, um, grab a little water, thin it out. Maybe we need to use a bigger brush too. We can kind of glaze. Let's grab a bigger brush. It'll go quicker. You can use a small one. I'm gonna stop, have a late lunch, and then do the live here in a little bit. For those of you guys who, it's so fun when you come to the lives, I get to chat with you guys. I learn stuff all the time. It's great to share things that we, that we run across. Oh, sorry if there was a... Something fell. Let's just glaze some yellow in here. I'm wiggling just to try to keep it random. Oh, I think that's kind of fun. Then we won't do white everywhere. Let's see, so the yellow kind of comes in. I may have gone a little far right there. What's nice is you can just wipe it up with a, your finger or paper towel. Maybe that'll be wider. And then, I got I need to step back from it so I have a new light so people who sent money to support the channel here I'll turn it off I love it because I think it's better for videoing um, but sometimes when the paint's wet I get some glare and I'm also I'm also looking around my phone these are good problems to have because I like hanging out with you guys eventually I'll have maybe better equipment I think it's really cool that I can use my phone. So I'm just thinking kind of varying the shape, which isn't totally following the reference photo. I might throw, of course if it's everywhere, it's nowhere. Oh, but I think I like that. And then have a little, we've got a little underglow like right there. We could throw a little, like on a car. You know how there's like those underglow lights? I better stop. <laughs> I like the layers. I like playing. And that yellow helps make my leg look a little bit more pink. It's kind of a yellow pink, but I think it helps it make it look more like a leg color. I was just saying to someone uh, else on, I don't know if it was Facebook or YouTube, but I was showing them how I painted a crane with some purple in it. It's a sandhill crane with red and it has a lot of beige, yellow beiges. Um, like I put purple in it, I put some teal in it. Like the value is much more important. And you get that this is a rusty hen of some sort. Okay, let's, um, what might make me happy too? Let's just grab, oh my paints are drying. It's definitely a good time to stop. So I'll spray them here. I'll just do a little bit. This is an eyeglass cleaner that I cleaned out and it just has water in it. So I'll mist them like that. Put a lid on top of it. 
And then it, this will slide into a gallon baggie. Makes kind of a terrarium and the paints will wake up a little bit. It doesn't work forever, but it works pretty well. Okay, I get sidetracked as stuff pops into my head. Okay, I like, I've got a little, I might need to do this again. My paint's kind of watery. Yeah, it feels too watery now. I don't know if that's because it was on my brush or what I did. Okay, let's see. So I, I kind of lined those up, so I'm going to bring, even though it's not in the reference photo, I'm going to bring one down. And this is actually pretty white right here. Let's just kind of dab. Maybe we'll dab this one. We'll see how it dries. It's going to be brighter. So then I kind of, I come back and I work on the values and then sometimes I'll cover them back up. I'll like, oh, I did that too much. Let's put, and then let's, I'm looking at my reference photo for ideas here. Okay, I don't want to put it, I'm, I'll be tempted to do it everywhere. I think that's one of the harder things is just to stop. All right, guys, I'm gonna, let's do a little tour and I'll be back tomorrow. Clean out my brush so I don't forget. Okay. How is it much closer to get the whole thing? Excuse me. So I'm on my tippy toes, <laughs> trying to see the top of my phone. Yeah, I might want to blend in some of this a little more, but that is starting to become personal preference now. I think this could be done. I've got, so it, it uh, distorts the color when I lift it up. Oh, I need to put grasses and I'm going to put some other things in there, but I mean, the chicken could be done. While I'm thinking of it, because I might forget, I'm going to take my light, light yellow. And there is actually a dot here, I'll show you. Well, it's actually the back of the eye, right there. But I don't have that much detail. But I think I'm going to put a dot. I was thinking there's a highlight. It's not in the, it's not in the um, light. Oh yeah, Mr. Sun. We pretty much have light coming from over here. You guys, I keep thinking of stuff. Okay. I'm just gonna see if I can get a little. So I'm not getting, I'm, I can't tell because it's such a light touch when I hit. Ah, got it. Did that take me about 20 times? You guys can let me know if you counted. <laughs> well, see, then we can, like, I could put like a little, other little. I don't know if that did anything. I really like this. Sometimes it's easier rather than paint a skinny line. I paint it in thick and then I come back and push like the red up into it and skinny it up. Okay guys, I'll be back tomorrow.
Hey, a couple of comments. So I lightened, let me go back to my reference photo here. I lightened the back and lightened this to give the rooster a bit of a top. Let's see, that's not, I don't know if that makes sense. So we see a lot of the side, but we see a little bit, of, we see a little bit of the top. So it has more form. Hopefully that makes sense. Here, when in doubt, look at your reference photo. I made it lighter. But see, we can see the back. There we go. That might make more sense right here. <laughs> Whenever I touch it with my finger, it likes to pop on. Um, I glazed with some orange. I don't know if that shows. I glazed with some of that raw sienna color I mixed. Um, I ended up I ended up putting more yellow back up here, and now which I like. But now I'm going. Do I have too much yellow? <laughs> can really overthink it. I did put in little bits of black just for a little more contrast. I am um, when I put down some wet paint I smeared out a couple little hazy pieces. There's one here but you don't really see it. Um, I was gonna talk about closure but I don't really have it also is like lost edges and hard edges. So hard edge there's a lot of contrast there. This one isn't really lost but it's really soft. A really soft edge right here. And so that can be entertaining too. Not only having dramatic light, but not having every edge stand out. And then I still like this little bit of glow around here. So now I'm a little nervous, you guys. I have never painted dandelions. And I drew three in for starters. Oh, I also put a little black down here for um, a little bit more shadow. Even though our light's pretty much coming from this direction. And then I glazed a little more yellow, which dried darker just to try to pump it up a little bit. A lot of what I was doing is just trying to pump up the values and shape the hen. Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, and I put a little orange red down here just to help because I've got a really strong color there. But these are going to be like little bullseyes. And of course the face always draws attention. So I think we're, I think we're good. <laughs> I wonder how many of you guys chuckle. I mean, I'm just sharing the things I think about what I'm painting. Uh, you don't have to think about those things. You know, I, a lot of times I, I say it a lot, I overthink. Well, I don't know what I was going to do. I think that's about it. I'm going to probably paint the dandelion. I'll probably paint the stems. Maybe some yellow green. I'll probably take that green, mix, mix some yellow. And I'm, I'm going to time lapse it so I can think. So I'm not trying to talk to you at the same time. And then we'll come back and chat about it. Okay guys, I'll be back in a bit. What do you guys think? I'm looking through my phone, but I can't see it very well. I did stand it up on my art table and then step back several feet. So when I'm on top of it, I don't like them, but I think I just need more weeds now. I've kind of got like one, two, three, one, two, three. So I like that. And then if you've watched my other videos, I always tend to kind of frame with my weeds and things. Um, I didn't know what to do or what to use, but I ended up using this little makeup brush. Does it say what it is? I used this in my cloud video. So I took the approach. Oh, I can't read it. Oh, real techniques. Oh, I can't read. It's too little. Um, I don't have my new glasses on. Um, and just kind of snuck up on the white. So I, I have matte medium. You can use water too. Sometimes when I'm scared, I use matte medium because I feel more confident with it. So I mixed about half matte medium, half titanium white, dipped it in there. And then this is a dry brush. So it, I didn't put any water in it. And I just made sure I just had a little bit of white on the top. 
And that was kind of nice because it gave me, it's about the right size for my dandelions. That one's a little... So that was nice. That helped. And then I thought, well, I need like light on one side. So then I grabbed a smaller Deerfoot stippler. Uh, this is a quarter inch. This is from Artist Loft from Michaels. And then I, same thing, dry, but I dipped it in straight up titanium white so I'd get a stronger white. And it's a little scary because it's hard to control. But that actually what helps it make look like a dandelion. And then I, I was putting in dark centers, spots, just kind of hinting a little bit at the centers. I think it's working. I think I need to put in more weeds and things. I did put one down here, like there's one falling. I might do another one. Because I kind of like that stuff, but I tend to want to do a lot of it. And really, one, one could do it. But I think that works. But then what I'm wondering is, does it work? So light ones, not much detail, are more off in the distance. Uh, brighter white ones with more detail come closer. Plus it's bigger. And then I'm, I buried the feet a little bit uh, in some grasses. Oh, and I, I keep switching brushes. I used uh, the same brush I was using for the feathers. So it's a Filbert number 10. I just put in some big brush strokes, like it's a little bit of grass or weeds or something. So anyway, I just thought I'd, I think that's working. Those are my very first dandelions, you guys. <laughs> so I kept, I just kept thinking, you know, I Googled, but I can't show you because I don't know that it's a royalty free photo. I Googled, you know, dandelion so I had a photo and I had taken a picture uh, while I was on a walk because the light was hitting it which is why I'm painting dandelions so I'm like ooh but the photo didn't capture the light but I could I remember it was or it was morning and I, they look like this they looked really pretty there must have been some water on them or something okay guys hopefully some of those comments help I'll be back in a bit Okay, friends, what do you think? I think I really liked, excuse me, my throat's dry, that I glazed the background all yellow because it really makes the white and everything pop forward. It might have done it anyway. It's always hard to know. I like it though. I tend to like my background soft or softer. Um, these are nice, circles are tar like targets or bullseyes. So these call a lot of attention, which is nice. I really like that. I kind of played with trying to not put in too many grasses and then not liking them, ch uh, varying the colors, and then pulling some forward with lighter values. And then I this leaf was in front of this grass blade. And I realized since this one goes off, these two go off the canvas. This probably should go over the leaf. Not I had it behind the leaf. It was probably fine either way. Oh, and then I like, like I put in a couple little, I've been doing this lately. I go in spurts where I do it, where I put in a couple little like dots of confetti. I put in some blue ones, bigger blue ones, some little white ones. Put one little one right up there. I think that's fun. I think I'm done. Um, I might come back tomorrow I, I usually don't, but I might see something tomorrow. 
But this calls, you know, these circles call attention, the yellow, the, of course the face calls attention. I like, I do think that was a good idea to make that kind of orange red. Oh, and then I like this, that there's a dark spot right there. All right, let's do a little tour. Oh, here, screenshot, but I don't need to pick it up much. Oops, and it's hard to get straight because everything's a little crooked. <laughs> I'm a little crooked. Okay. Trying to see the top of my phone. Here, I'm gonna get on my tippy toes. The values really, this is dramatic, so you can really see it. The values really do the work. Here, let me get closer. My brush strokes aren't that neat or precise. And especially in the, um, that's not focusing. Maybe if I stick my thumb in there. Especially with the, um, I, was gonna, I wanna call them daffodils, dandelions. I have art brain going. Do you guys get art brain? Let me know in the comments. That's really fun. And then a few, a few go on to the bottom. And then I have just these two going over the side here and then these two here. Kept that part simple. I painted just a little bit on the side. Okay, well let me know if you give this one a try. It's a fun reference photo. I like, I like that it's looking down. It's gonna, it's looking for bugs or whatever they eat. Um, let me know let's see let me know let me know if you painted any of my other chickens i have a few traceables on my website anitro.com i think you'll like some of them super super appreciate your support i couldn't do this without all of you guys great big happy art hugs and i hope to chat with you soon bye guys